Either one. So there's a kind of a single question for that. Come on in. So it's a big bowl in here. We call this our pool room. And oh, oh, okay. <laughs> Uh, this was originally a microfilm vault. It was the only vault that came with this building when we moved in here. Um, and we store uh, our safety film collections in this vault and next door, which we'll also visit momentarily. Uh, our nitrate film collections we cannot store on site uh, because of fire regulations. We keep those at Fort Jackson um, in some old munitions bunkers, and we can do a little snapshot of them here. Wow. Uh, it's as close as cool. you get on this tour, I'm afraid. Um, when we recan, we try to move things into archival plastic containers, which Lydia might have mentioned to you. Um, so here's an example of one of the movie tone films, and it's been recanned in this lovely, inert, yellow plastic can with a beautiful identifying label, and it looks to be in excellent condition. Um, it's a real treasure. Did the acetate materials come out of the boxes out there, or are those strictly nitrate? Oh, those are all nitrate. Acetate materials were shipped in... Uh, um, if you can see the uh, MPC, has MPC, right? Uh, cardboard boxes, the mm. really kind of ratty ones over there on the second right. That oh, we have, we have, yeah. We have handwritten labels on them. Yeah. Those, are, those are, tend to be acidic cardboard, and so those are standard for what the film is shipped in when it comes from a lab. So Kodak sends it in that, the lab prints it, puts it back in that. And then you know, over time, that cardboard deteriorates. The, the one that he was just touching that has the metal edges, those are actually non-acidic. They're, uh, they're acid-free. Uh, a cardstock boxes, but, um, but the original Fox things uh, were all in cardboard. At any rate, they come from cardboard, they come from the cans outside, they come from the cans like Lydia showed you, we tried to get them into inert plastic. Um, it's not free, uh, and we can't do it without investing some labor, so it's not an immediate process, and you'll see as you look down towards the back, some of our in-process collections, um, they're in a much more variable uh, storage Wow. State, uh, but we're working through them. So on your left, the eight, the the yellow here is is in. Not every can is full, but that's this is about yeah. four million feet of film. Wow. Uh, in these rows here. Wow. I'll also show you down this aisle. Um, we have our preservation elements. Um, so these are films that have been copied to polyester film base, which is much more stable than either acetate or nitrate. Um, it was, uh, for a long time, the accepted standard for film preservation to copy to polyester. Um, in an increasingly digital environment, uh, that model um, is increasingly viable. Um, Currently, it costs about five dollars a foot to copy to polyester, or more, uh, depending on who you use yeah, and that's how they crazy. do it. Yeah. Uh, and Greg just told you that you're looking at about four million feet right here. We've got seven million more out at Fort Jackson, so that's twenty million dollars. Nothing to sneeze at. Yeah. Mm. Uh, <laughs> more. I mean, times yeah, you know, times five, right? So, um, and that price is going up. And it's questionable if film stock manufacturing, polyester base, or otherwise will even continue. Yeah. Um, so we are looking at an increasingly um, digital uh, environment. What, what are your plans? How do you view the future in terms of storage on media of some sort? Because I'm very interested in that personally, for my it's own difficult. stuff. Um, so we are working on, let's move into the next fall. I'm sure that's fine. right on down there. I'll, you I'll got it, Greg? Yeah. Thanks. Uh, we're working on our digital video repository. You might have been to mark.se.edu. You can watch the movie streaming through the site. Um, on the user facing side, there are access quality videos that are quite small. Mm -hmm. uh, but that uh, repository is also designed head on in. It's basically a meat locker. Um, also designed to store our preservation uh, assets, our digitized preservation assets. Um, oh. No, so those are digitized. Oh. So if we digitize it, uh, that digital video repository is made to store the digital assets. Um, what, what the originals we still keep pulled in our vaults. 
I'll ask you the questions outside. All right, that sounds good. It's freezing in here. Uh, so the point to make in here is generally the colder and drier you can make film, the longer it will last. Mm. Uh, oh. This wall was built with a generous uh, donation from Dean Marianne Fitzpatrick to support the Chinese home collection, which is what you're looking at right there. Um, and the preservation index in here uh, is about 200 years for acetate. Next door it was only about 75 years. So dropping the temperature and humidity by about 10 degrees and by about 20% almost, uh, buys you a lot, relatively, buys you a, buys you a fair amount of, of time. Um, it is not quite at what is considered the, the standard, the gold standard for uh, acetate film preservation. Uh, we would like it to be just a few degrees colder, um, but we couldn't afford to get there because our cooling elements are really outside, exposed to the elements that are in the warehouse, but again, it's not temperature controlled in any way. So. Thank you. <laughs> sure thing. Sorry it's cold. We try to keep color in here. Right, it's it's warm too when I'm black on It's about uh, 48 degrees Fahrenheit. You'll experience a slight glass fog in there. Although not too bad. It's been a lot of yeah. So, um, so now you we'll digitize head back it. Inside. And you, it goes into a computer. But then from there, what do you do with it? Right. So, um, First of all, digitizing a film at Preservation Master Quality makes a very, very large file. Um, we're talking for our films, which are only you know five to fifteen minutes long, several hundred gigabytes uh, per item. Uh, we estimate that it will take about four to eight petabytes to digitize the entire box collection. Um, How many terabytes? Well. It's not quite a base 10 system, but roughly what that What? Roughly? Um, 1,000 terabytes is a petabyte. And then you said four, I think? Correct. 4,000 terabytes. Come on in here. Again, watch your stuff. Uh, Oh, this is uh, nice. But we're going to stop just for a second in our telescening room. Um, hmm. uh, <laughs> hey. Film is not very accessible for our users, uh, so for a long time uh, we have been copying it originally to video and now increasingly to digital video uh, for people to be able to access the content. Um, either on site upstairs in our film reference library or off site, we can mail them a tape or they can watch it through our repository. Um, that's increasingly the, the way that we provide access. So Scott and Ryan uh, are here working away, and I'll let them say a few words, I think, maybe, about what they do. Oh, I'll ask them okay. to say a few words about okay. what they do. Oh, OK. Um, do you have any questions? <laughs> this is our standard definition telecine. And uh, pretty much everything in this, I mean, everything on these walls uh, was taken from the telecine there on 35 millimeter or 16 millimeter film and uh, generates a standard definition signal. So we put the tape, we can capture that, digitize that. What's, you what mean, what is it, 520 lines? 525. 525. So why not go to, uh, you know, uh, HD? Uh, well, if you've got all, enough money. <laughs> well, the machine, the machine is also from like the late 80s. So, I mean, that unit would have cost uh, several hundred thousand dollars in the late 80s, and it would have been close to state of the art for transferring film yeah. to standard definition, and nobody had anything other than standard definition. So mm -hmm. uh, it's been the workforce of this unit in order to provide uh, media to content producers for 25 years, 20 years? It's still yeah. extraordinary. Yeah. 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 Easily, yeah, at least 20, yeah, 20 for sure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's been extraordinarily reliable. Mm -hmm. uh, and we can capture the video signal uh, and bring it into the digital era, which is what Ryan's working on at her workstation. Jackson. who are being instructed. 
Randolph Field, Texas is now a school where teachers are taught the finer points of battle flying. In the plains here, flyers will fall in the war. It's a news reel. To Army instructors, lessons Section. learned in actual combat. The information is transmitted by maneuvers in the sky. Oops. Fox researchers, the who will turn out the best pilots in the world. 